submarine. What a series we have ahead of us, and what a map to start it out on. A red Protoss player in the bottom right-hand corner from Alpha X. Give it up if you're cheering on Zaun. Up left-hand side, our Blue Zerg player from Kai Z Gaming. This is Sola. Okay, first map of the Grand Finals. Yes, the Warty TV Winter Championship. This is what it all comes down to. I love Zaun's story in this event. You know, this is the story we don't get to tell a lot, but when it happens, it's freaking awesome. He showed up to a qualifier. He qualified into the preliminaries. He, 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 and only barely as well. He got second place. He lost out a soul in that qualifier. Someone else who's had a great you know, performance this event. He lost out as you saw, it was an awesome series. It was already kind of the highlight of the, you know, of the Winter Championship back then. Uh, out of three qualifiers. He came through the preliminaries, he got top four, you know, good result. You know, that's what we kind of expect down. A strong player, but once you start adding in those invited players that don't play in the preliminaries, he becomes the underdog of the tournament. And here he is. He's on a streak. He beat Sol in the, in the first match. Lost to Cure, went down to the lower bracket, has won multiple series in a row against Denver, Ragnarok, Zest, Cure, and Bjorn. Right now, he's on a nine-map winning streak today, as he's taken down, I can't count, seven-map winning streak today, as he went 2-0 against Zest, 2-0 against Cure, and 3-0 against Bjorn. He's on a streak, he's on fire. Excited to see what he can do. Of course, Zola didn't lose a series in the tournament. He's 4-0 and zero in matches. He went through... Uh, his section of the bracket pretty comfortably and has been um, continuing to deliver as well. Winning out against Bjorn in the winner bracket finals, of course. And before that, he beat Kua 2-0, he beat Ragnarok 2-1, and he beat Skillers 2-0. So, Solo on a good run himself. But, you know, it's not surprising to see Solo in this grand finals like it is to see Zaun in this grand finals, you know? That's the, that's the difference. That's why I'm that's why I'm on the Zaun hype train. You know what? I'm gonna say I want Zaun to take it all home today. He's the underdog story. I'm believing. Quite a council is gonna be finishing up in a few moments here from Zaun. We're gonna have our robo facility in the main base on the way, so we're gonna be seeing a glaved opener most likely. Unless Zaun has some tricks up his sleeves with dark shrines. Glaives is not uncommon on Submarine. We don't see this map a lot, but when it does happen, it's a good map for Glaives. It's short, it's easy to get across. You can go for an Immortal Adept follow-up. Which can also be very effective. So a lot to, a lot to watch out for um, in terms of what follows up from these Adepts. Obviously, you can just kind of transition a bit more regularly, but I think on this map, it was really... Um, it was really Zest and Stats that kind of popularized this kind of adapts into that kind of immortal push and really kind of powering it up. And it's been, every time we've seen Submarine lately, that's kind of been the build we've seen. So, eyes out for that. Uh, it means we'll be watching for mortal production behind the Glaive Attackers. But now, Sola, he sits to the front, he looks at what's going on, he's not seen any Stargate units, so he's on his way to the Road Tron in plenty of time to prepare roaches for these adapts. As the prism pops out, it'll go across the map. You're looking for about 426, 427 on the first warping of Adepts across the map. So let's see how on point with the build Zaun is looking as he moves to the upper left-hand side already. Moving on up to the upper left and just going to be seeing a single circling. Moves around the right-hand side. The other Adepts just going to warp in here and here we go. Pressing forward, eight Adepts. So the warp in was a good time. He warps in a little far away, you could argue, maybe, but all good. And Adept's going to start chasing by his solo. A lot of Ling, so very Ling heavy on the defense. He's only just getting his first few roaches out now. He's going to go up to four, and he will morph in Ravages with those roaches. So he's going to have a little bit of extra range, a little bit of extra damage output. This is fine as long as the Ravages stay out of trouble from those Adepts, which they should be able to with this amount of Lings in front of them. The Ravages should never really get caught off guard by the Adepts at all. Now behind this, we said, we'll look what the follow-up is going to be. And it's going to be a Robo-Bay. So one of the ways that we've seen some players play in this Adept follow-up, and this is not something we've actually cast in maybe a month or two, but it's a, uh, you go into this Disruptor follow-up, and it's actually really cool. 
Um, because then you put a lot of pressure on the disruptors, and you can transition from there, and you only go like one or two disruptors, and then you can kind of move on. So let's see if it's going to be that. The other option or alternative from there is obviously with a Robo Bay Colossi. Colossi not terrible, um, but if Solo goes for something like a Roach Ravager attack, Colossi are not going to be as good. Colossi are great if your opponent starts going Hydras. Uh, Colossi are not so good against like Roach Ravager and so on. Adepts moving up the top, some of them still on the upper right hand side. And these couple of Adepts on load and gonna get themselves a drone kill on that third base. Adepts will shade toward the third, but will not commit in. Prism is there, getting pushed back by the Queen. Now some Adepts onto the natural. Overall, just keeping these Adepts around as long as possible to then slowly get damage with them over time. Just shading them into Mineral Line here, Mineral Line there. You can see Zaun taking a little bit of an eco lead at the moment. Now he does need to make sure he can get, you know, the third base down back at home. Let's see that Gravitic Drive coming up. Our first two Disruptors are going to be out. And that's when the War Prism should report back home for duty. Taking up those uh, couple of uh, Disruptors and bringing them onto the map to see what can be done. Uh, the Adept shade to the left side. And they get caught. They're going to try and recall out. There's going to be a few of them going down. Nice catch by Sola. His consistent tracking of these Adepts finally pays off a little bit. Uh, Solar still drawing, so going up to about 60 workers now, and with no Stargate in play, he's going to take the opportunity to build up a Spire. So we get the Spire going right away now. Get that started off. As you see, the couple sentries just going to nibble through the Overseer. So obviously taking some damage, the Stalker's firing as well, and just going to be seeing the Prism of Zaun back around through the middle of the map. So this is going to be the Disruptors we've been hyping up for a little while now. They're not going to have a huge amount of time they can be free on the map for with the Spire coming up. Meters will shut down this prism and will stop you from continuing to commit in time and time again. Going to catch a few drones there. Three workers going down and the Disruptors will just back it off. This is what the Disruptors are good for. Poking in, doing some damage, going again. And it is Colossus on the follow-up right now. So first Colossus coming out and we'll see how many more we get. No extended thermal lance though, and Zaun's starting to push across the map with Blink finishing soon. It doesn't feel like a long game setup from Zaun. You know, he's not got gases on the third base, he doesn't have a forge in place, he doesn't have any upgrades on the way through either. So it doesn't feel as though Zaun's going into a longer game at all. It just feels like he wants to win this with a, with a push right now, and as Sol is stacking up money to afford muters, he's gonna be caught cool with a little bit of gas in the bank. First disruptor shot's real good out on these Road Ravager units. That's another Ravager here. Ling's start running in. That's the Disruptors, obviously, out of shots for now. The Colossus is looking to try and save the day, help out against these Lings. There's still a few Adepts in here to help against the Lings as well. Gonna warp in more Adepts, and I find that a little surprising because we're mostly against Rogue Ravager now, so I was kind of expecting to see maybe more so kind of a, uh, an extra Stalker warp in here, but for the moment, the Adepts are looking okay. Prism and the Colossus dodge away to the side. There's a Disruptor still around. Everything else from Zaun is going to go down. Solar is going to find a defense. It's an exciting fight where I wouldn't say any any one side of this was really looking better than the other for a little while. Ling is going to go chasing down that Stalker, or two Stalkers and the Disruptor at the bottom. Disruptor shot fires, hits a Ravager, hits a Roach. Zaun gets a little cleanup. And the, again, the extra Stalkers continue to warp in as you push that Roach Ravager army away back through the middle of the map. 10 more Mutalisks on the way out. 11 more Mutas on the way out with the plus one Flyers. Also coming in on the Spire. Well, by defending, Solo obviously kind of buys himself the chance to get into Mutas, so he's able to actually play the game he wanted to play. Zaun now playing from a little bit behind, right? Because he doesn't have the upgrade or anything, so he's only just now starting plus one. But his economy is still pretty reasonable, and he's got three bases. I wouldn't say this is terrible for him. This is bad. Losing these two Disruptors is kind of a real shame. Especially when you've already lost a Disruptor or two earlier in the game, right? So this is actually your rebuilding Disruptors that you lose out on. So you lost one Disruptor earlier, you rebuild one, and you lose the, the, you know, the two that were still on the map. Uh, those Mutas, I actually didn't realize that Zan just had no idea about these Mutas, otherwise that Prism wouldn't have been on the map like it was. Good news is you've got Blink to help out with this. Right now, the Mutas are just going to go for it, though. They take down a battery and... Uh, the Stalkers from the other side are going to end up blinking on this, so Solar doesn't get too much. I don't blame him for diving on the opportunity, though. It did feel as though there wasn't a lot of Stalkers there and that you could maybe fight it. In the end, has to just back it up, though. Back it up, back it up. The 
seen our units just set out the front. Just going to be seeing another few Mutalisks. Hanging around this bottom side, looking to try and dive in. A couple Stalkers firing, and Mid is taking some hits. The Stalkers bling forward, the Mutas do get chased away, and that is a lag spike for somebody. Nothing like a bit of drama in the finals with a bit of lag. He was Daz Daz. And Daz Daz is still his secret power. He's just revealed it to everybody. He's trying to cover it up. He's trying to pretend he's spamming. That's why he's written ASD, ASD after. But Daz Daz is actually what Solo does to actually win games. He, he types Daz Daz. It's like a cheat code. Makes the Protoss units like 10% weaker. It is balanced though, because you have to type it out every 5 seconds. So he has to like keep on spamming it, and that's why he's just caught here like, oh no, he's like, Ugh. Yeah. Alright. Game paused. Game resumed. We resume, and uh, we go back into this as we do have. Oh, units just setting up on this bottom side. Uh, a couple of Debs coming through and a couple of drones being picked off. So nice little harassment here from Zound up on the top. As we got ourselves an interesting game. You know, Zound's on his way towards Storm. He's got a good Stalk account. He's got Colossus to help out a little bit. He's got a couple of Colossi now. And Solo's kind of just been on Road to Ravager with the Mutas, but they're not really the Mutas doing enough just yet. So he's looking to transition as well. He just added on a Baneling Nest. And that plus one melee is on the way. So this entire game has been... On the more kind of diverse side of things, when it comes down to what you see in PvZ, it's definitely anything but the norm that we've come to expect from double stargates and void rays and all that kind of stuff, you know. Now, Solar is maxed out. We'll see if he wants to make a bit of a fight here to try and fight at all. Again, Bane that's done, but doesn't sort of uh, centrifugal hooks so that Bane speed not on the way. He is trying to dive in. A few Stalkers from the other side. I mean, the Storms are great on the Mutas, and that's going to dissuade Sola from really going into any kind of a fight there. Surely there's no commitment from Sola in that situation. I don't think so. Go back around the right, and we are just going to see a Nexus going down. That's a nice little cancel, and now the Mutas are going to maybe pull Sound out of position a little bit for the rest of this Solar Army to get on top of the third base. Yeah, kind of working for the moment, but I don't think Solar actually has the power to fight the army once it gets back here, and stack defense will hold the lines. Yeah, Solar is not going to be able to break Sound down still, so now you really should start looking towards Baneling Speed, right? Because I imagine that is Solar's next step, and I say that, but he is actually just building more and more Mutas. Maybe just hoping to outmass Zaun when it comes to the Mutalist count. It is a game where Zaun's obviously been quite certain that he doesn't want to go into a Stargate still. I think this is a bad call from Sol. He's fighting these Stalkers, but he's losing a lot of Mutas in the process. He might eventually win the fight. I don't think that necessarily means it's good for you. That felt like a few too many, uh, few too many Stalkers to go in against. A few Lings run in, that's going to help out, but there's the Storms coming in too, and that's just going to once more... Or Solar into no better decision than just backing away, but he's going to re-engage low HP. Nah, no, surely not. You just can't commit to that. At what point do you drop a Stargate as Because the longer this game goes, the more meters are being made, the more it's like, well, maybe I should. I feel like he might have done if he didn't just kill off a whole bunch of these meters. He's killed 30 in the game. And now he's just going to go for the fight, so he's going to end up, you know, making a bit of a base trade out of this. He's going to give up ever trying to properly fight this army. Well, base trade in a mutilist play is a very brave thing to try and do. Sol is ready to pounce on this third base as well to Roach Ravager here, so he's going to be right on top of the base trade right from the start. Okay, uh, yeah, trading a muta play is really difficult because the mutas are so good in base trades, and the muta play typically just has more, more real estate, right? There's more hatcheries around the map because they expand faster. Because the Protoss is contained in on those three bases. So yeah, yeah. I, I can get it. I feel like Zaun's just a bit frustrated and doesn't feel like there's a better option. But unfortunately, it's just not going to be a good option in the end anyway, right? I mean, Zaun's army looks as though it's 
It's starting to fall apart a little bit as these meters come through. Everything in the main base continues to be cleaned out. We can push forward here as Zhao. We blink in. Overlord's in some trouble for sure. This hatchery in some trouble. Everything continues to drop. And this should just be a little bit too much solar still, alright? I mean, yeah, okay, you get these overkills. I guess solar still... Does he have to kill the army off? Is there any probes on the map? Two workers alive from Zan, where are they? Okay, there is one over here, so maybe this is still hopeful that you can just defend with the army. Solar has 27 drones and the ability to build new hatcheries, so... I'm not really certain it's going to make the difference. This is the only pylon in the game right now from Zaun. He has no structures finished. It's the only structure he's currently building. So Solar just needs to dive on that pylon. He wins the game. Unless, of course, another structure builds, which it will. And the Assimilator now starts over on this position as well. Mita's just going to get this pylon. So it is now the Assimilator and another pylon starting next to the Assimilator. Thing is, if Solar just sends his drones down here, he's going to start mining the game while Zaun isn't. So, Solar isn't in an immediate rush to actually jump on that. He can just say, well, if you make a play onto my hatchery, I'm going to dive on your final structures. If you let me be, I'm going to have a good time as well because I'm going to be mining and you're not. So, I think Solar's got this one fully under control. Pretty much in the bag at this stage. Well handled situation by Sola. He really forced Zaun into this position as well, the way that he was playing and the way everything was setting up. He was just going to come around, try and pick up whatever they can. Another few stalkers coming through. Going to drop a couple of storms off. I mean, those meters take damage from the storms, don't they? That does hurt. Zaun's on his way to a nexus, but with two probes, his rebuild is just so much slower than anything that Sol is going to be able to do. And that is that is really the biggest issue of all here. It's a massive problem. Here's pull back over this left-hand side. Couple of Colossi in some trouble. Oh, I mean, again, there's only so much more I can really tell you guys about this game. It's just a, a waiting game of... Can Sola's army take down this Protoss army? And I think the answer is probably at the end of the day, yes, sound... Have to cancel up the Nexus here. He's going to keep on trying to build units. I think that was my Templar trying to come in. He's got an Assimilator here. Solo can just take the Assimilator down. He's going to go for the Storms. That is actually the only structure. And Zan's going to type GG before he gets eliminated. His army doesn't stand up to the rest of it anymore. It's just uh, too much from Solo. Solo forces Zan into this position. And uh, Solo makes it happen. That's what it comes down to as we dive into... Game number two, leading the series in the top right-hand side. We're going to start it off with the Blue Zerg player from Kai Z Gaming. Give it up! We're cheering on Solar. Taking on the Red Protoss bottom left-hand side. It is Zaun. As we get into game number two of our best of five finals, Heavy Trevi is going to go one step further, pushes up to the 1,200 subscriber count, gift and subs out to you. Ling... Tong shoots you, and also SC2 submit for the two-month resub. Welcome back, and welcome. Guys, if you are new, subscribe today, because we've had a lot of you guys. Don't forget, replay packs available on the Discord server. Exclamation mark Discord. If you are heading over there, leave a message and uh, write a couple words. It just helps us out. Helps us to um, helps us to just provide, uh, keep our Discord partnership. Solo is going to hatch block with that drone coming across the map. So do check that out, and you can, of course, get your hands on those replay packs if you're now a subscriber. We'll be doing a new replay pack next couple of days, featuring all of these Winter Championship games and everything else that's happened in the last little while on the stream. Yo, Jack9 Crow. Thank you for giving us sub to 999ELB. Five-month resub on that one. Thank you so much for the generosity. All right, so this uh, is a good response from Zaun. Five probes pulled. Going to Chrono Boost out a Zealot. Obviously, this is not regular from Solar, right? He decides specifically on this map to say, right, I'm going to send a drone across. I'm going to put the hatch block down. It's going to throw you off your game a little bit. It's going to throw you off your timings. Definitely make things a little bit more complicated than they have been in the last few games. The drone just cancelled. Doesn't get an Evo Chamber down to extend the block. It kind of feels like the drone's going to die unless it gets to an extractor. <laughs> I'm not sure it's worth the five probes still chasing this drone, by the way, though. 
<laughs> okay, he gets it. But that's five probes. I should have been back in the main base and mining. I guess he's kind of saturated. Okay, it's not the end of the world, but it's still kind of funny. <laughs> How often do you see five probes running around after a single drone after it's already, you know, been cancelled from a hatchery? Double hatch from Solos. He just double expands, of course. No real surprise there. Going to three bases quickly. And, uh... Yeah, typically from this scenario, now you go into an Adept and maybe you can get a bit of a Zealot Adept pressure on the map is down. We'll see what he can produce over the next couple of moments. Pulling is still just going to be pulling all the way back and we do have an Assimilator off to the side. Kyle on here as well from Zaun getting that ready to go. Lings is rallying up to the third base. All of our other drones are going to move across and get into position as well as our depth comes through. Our warp gate's coming up. And there is Zaun going to build a second Twilight Council of this series already. Got this Twilight coming out down the bottom. Here comes our little Overlord from Solar. Into the natural expansion. And a couple of probes popping out. Just going to get to mining here. As you see, our Robo facility continuing to set up. Stalker nibbling away at the OV. So doing a little bit more damage as well. Resonating Glaives coming through from Zaun. And just going to be seeing a few extra drones. Continuing in right now as well. Extra drones coming through. The queen on the way up on the natural expansion. And it's going to come down to how well Solo can defend round two of Adepts. Now, as we're drawing later than the last game, but of course, we've had hatchery blocking and all sorts of things happening early this game. So, timings kind of go out the window in that regard. Ling's going to move back up to the top side. The Adepts here from Zao. I'm going to shade up the right as well. So away they go. we got a couple gates. Resonating Glaives. All of this coming through. Our pylons are still building also. And yeah, Ling's going to collect back together towards the natural expansion. Now Dark Shrine's on the way from Zao as well. Getting this up and running here very soon. So it's going to be Glaives into the DT. So a little bit different to the last game. And if Solo doesn't get a lair up or any protection, obviously he's in some trouble. He's got a spore over here. The lair is still kind of nice because actually having something that can move around and actually, you know, an overseer that can move different locations, different places, that's kind of critical here as well because otherwise these DT can still really kind of zone you out of certain places and they can still have a very good time uh, aggressively. So something to kind of watch for is did you see our adept's going to shade through, going to go toward the natural. Lings are, well, lings are getting there. They're going to be able to surround those adepts if necessary. You see a couple of extra probes just going to be popping momentarily as uh, additional adepts come on through on the front. So, all of this coming in, Zaun is going to shade to the top side. I'm just going to get into the top side of this right away. Just going to see this units here and he's just not going to commit. That's mostly going to come to the DTs. Now, of course, you can send DTs one way and obviously the, the adepts another. So, if you keep the units away from the main and the DTs get into the main... Then there's obviously a potential to snipe down a, uh, a spore crawler there. There are lings in the main base. You can see that Solo's prepared for at least something. The potential of the prism even just dropping the depths, right? So that's what you need to be careful of. You can't let these DTs find a spore crawler because you don't have a lair. Okay, he's just going to get a queen. I wonder if he could have walked to the spore and gotten that kill. Because if that spore goes down, there's no detection in this natural. That's a hatchery kill unless the spore crawler relocates. Obviously, just using the prism to keep these DTs alive, moving them around. Keep them as safe as possible as the devs are going to go shade and buy once again up to the top. I like this. Splits a few off to the left-hand side. Doesn't finish the ones on the right, but the ones on the left will start to get a few drones. So Solo losing out on six workers already. The Ling's wrapping around. That's seven workers going down. Okay, so seven workers get killed off. That's nicely handled. We're just going to be seeing the rest of these adepts from Zaun still sitting out the front. That's again a gateway coming through. On that main base. Uh, 
Now Spy is building from solar in the back of this natural. Just going to be seeing the other links showing up and starting to wrap around those adepts. Ah, I like what Zan's been able to get done here, right? He's got the third base up as well. Solo's going to play pretty similar to the last game. Go into that Spire off of the Ling Roach Ravager. And uh, it did definitely work out for him in the end. But of course, this game, Zan's not going to go for as aggressive of a push initially. He doesn't go for the Disruptor follower because of that DT setup initially, right? So it's going to work differently on Zan's side of things as well. So this is just not, it's not just a repeat of the last game. There's definitely... Uh, Working a little differently. Version of the right hand side, we do see our roach is backing away. Seven meters coming through the hatch on the right is going to get ready to go as well. And Zaun is going to go for a press forward. There's a few additional stalkers just warp in here. Going to see an extra stalker and a Zalt coming through. A bit of a hatcher on this right-hand side. The Arkham gets in there to pick that off. And Zaun looking for a little bit of a fight right now. A couple of disruptors, uh, Ravagers, sorry, going to bow down. I didn't think Zaun was going to be as aggressive as this on this uh, follow-up this time around. Not going to lie, but, you know, he had the forge. He had the upgrade on the way. But finally, he sees an opportunity. Now, the Mutas are going to dive on the Prism. They don't finish it off, though. It's a little bit more micro. Finally, the Prism goes down. The Mutas have all died, which is a, a big win, if nothing else. Do you have enough to get through this Roach Army? Of course, no reinforcements makes it pretty tough. But these two Immortals are standing their ground for the moment. And there's only really Ravagers left. Ravagers are very flimsy when they're on their own. They don't really stand up to much. As Looks as though Zaun's going to back it up. He does have other units coming across the map here. Let's see a roach going down, Ravagers chased away momentarily, plus one attack, finishing on the forge in a few moments. So they're just going to come around the top as a fourth hatch gets going in the upper left corner of the map as well. Stalker's blinking back into the middle. So again, five more meters coming through. The plus one missile is on the way up, and we do have Zaun. Ready and for an attack in. Just going to see Lingro Dravager coming through. Zap Stalker's Immortals continue to fight this. I think the problem for Solar now is he just doesn't have any tech in this army. And now plus one is done from Zaun. This army's only really getting better. A couple of new muters show up. I mean, they shouldn't really add much to this fight at all. And Zaun's going to go for the push through. Side this series up. I did not think he was being as aggressive as this this time around, but yeah, he found the open and it was perfect this time. The Archons mixed in really making game three of our grand finals. Jagan Nathan going to be our map. This might be the map we start to see a non-Twilight opening from Zam. Something Stargate related, maybe. As in the bottom left-hand side, our Red Brothers player. It is going to be Zaun from Alpha Rex. Yo, Integral 0808, thank you so much for the four month reason on the Prime Party. Has been a party today. We've had some great games. Top right, our Blue Zerg is Solar. Honestly, I, I've said this a whole bunch this entire tournament. This entire tournament has just been fantastic. We've had so many fun matches. It's been, um, it's just been awesome through and through. I've enjoyed every moment of it. Like, I, I look back on the bracket and I'm like, well. I could pick maybe like three series that weren't good, <laughs> you know, which is uh, pretty impressive when we've had so many matches the last few days. We did what, um, 24 plus 6, 30 series in total? Yeah, like 10% of them sucked maybe. <laughs> actually, actually incredible. Well, I'm waiting for the tech choice really from Zaun to start talking a little bit about how this game is going to go. The drone, the probe, going to get into a little fight over here. Zaun just trying to slow things down, obviously forcing that hatch to the left-hand side initially. Just slows down. All these drones have longer to run to start mining, right? So it does slow down the eco. That little bit. There it is. It's going to be a Stargate opener. 
it was time for a Stargate opener, right? You know, you open Twilight Council two games in a row. Jackanath is definitely a good map for playing like a lot, you know, a later game Stargate style on as well. Can definitely go a pretty split map as well. So definitely some choices. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, Adept goes pretty well across the map and gets two drones. Sorry for that, guys. Bad observing on my part. So, yeah, a couple of drones going down. We are going to see the Stargate finishing, so we'll see what Zan wants to build to begin with. Oracle of the Void Ray, guys. Oh, is he going to go really wild and build a Phoenix? Going to be the Oracle to start. So, Oracle to begin with. Maybe Oracle into Void. Of course, we have seen some players using that Oracle, Oracle style. Is it Zan that cranked out, like, a double Oracle into Archon drop opener? I feel like it was. Is that against Ragnarok yesterday, maybe? Or maybe against the Denver at some point? I think it was against Ragnarok on Oxide yesterday. So what I'm saying is that Zaun doesn't necessarily go for the most standard of builds. I mean, it's been forever since we've seen kind of, you know, double Oracle Archon drop. And, well, he has double Oracle. It still doesn't have to be Archon drop. You can go Twilight Forge and you can go plus one and blink behind this. But uh, if you go double Oracle Archon drop, then you obviously can go into the, um... You need a robot if you're going to go Archon drop. Just the Twilight right now? What is it if it's just the Twilight? Is that Glaives of two Oracles? I think it is, right? I think it's two Oracles Glaives that Zaun is planning for here. That's what's so tricky about Zaun. He really isn't afraid of pulling out all of these builds, which are a little bit lost in the meta. You know, builds which you've just not seen for a long time, which are considered outdated. And it makes his playstyle kind of scary because it's difficult to prepare properly every single game. This is going to be double Oracle into Glaives. Okay. Well, a little bit different. The Oracles are going to dive by for some extra drones, by the way. So that's not going to be 11 drones in the game. Already Zaun getting to a pretty good eco lead. Lings on the bottom side surrounding this battery. A couple of adepts here fighting, and those Lings taking some serious damage. The Lings do get pushed away out through the right hand side. Well, Forge is going to be finishing up shortly here. Just going to be seeing our lab building in the main base, and these other Lings wanting to come through, get on top of these adepts. They're going to get turned around pretty quickly. The other Oracles are showing up. Well, they're just about halfway done in that main base is our two oracles of sound. Just gonna settle on the right hand side for a few moments, so making their way up. And these couple of queens gonna come through, gonna put some damage out for this oracle taking damage. Those so pretty low HP. Now we have a ton of adepts coming around this right hand side, so that's a lot of numbers. And Solar is preparing forward aptly, right? He's getting the roach count up and running. Of course, this is a game where Zaun's already on 59 drones. Like, his economy behind this is actually insane. He's up 8 workers, and of course, a lot of that comes down to what these oracles have gotten done. And then the adepts are going to force you to build these units, so you can't keep droning to play catch-up as solo as much as you'd like to. So Zaun doesn't need to commit in to be ahead right now. He's actually fine just to back it off, and, you know, what we've seen earlier today is that Zaun is very good at splitting off 2 or 3 adepts at a time now, and then just getting those into mineral lines, you know, 2 adepts at a time, and just picking away at a few drones like that and just slowly whittling down the work account once again. Kind of like this, right? These two adepts are absolutely looking to make it across to a mineral line. Instead, they run into some zerglings. They don't even die. The lings just run past and he gets a bunch of kills on them, so... And another one! Yeah, that's actually pretty cute. Okay, Solo's gonna go for this. He's cutting drones to just make Ling Roach green. And he's not gonna stop, so... Solo wants to go across the map aggressively. He wants to put an end to this. The oracles come into the main base, uh, the third base, drop a revelation. Not much to see there, right? I mean, what's actually kind of cute is that the third base is fully saturated on gas and everything, so you can't pick up info from there. The All of the kind of the non-saturated stuff is kind of in the middle. This mineral line not fully saturated, this gas not taken. So it makes it a little more difficult for Zaun to see maybe the exact work account here and exactly how many units your opponent's working on. Of course, at this stage, he should have figured out what's happening. He's seen with the oracles, these units moving across the map. He's building six cannons, and now two batteries stays his wards as well. Army supply is low, but he has a lot of tools and, uh, you know, resources to aid him in kind of surviving this. Oh, that's a really nice first battle, though. Gets rid of the stasis wards. You don't get anything caught up in that. Things are going to slip into the natural slash main. I feel like he could have ran those by. 
Actually going to kill off the Overseer, of course, no DTs or anything. Uh, would just be... Obviously, it's not really that important right now in this scenario. Would have only really kind of given vision to Stasis Wards, which it's already done. Sam does get Supply Blocks. So we do in the main base have a couple of things that get cleaned up now. Sol going to continue forward. The Army Supply in Sol's favor at the moment. He still presses in these couple of sentries. Going to be in some trouble too. Roach Ravager continues forwards and going for the Immortal. Have we seen a super battery yet? We have. I'm not sure. It was over on this left-hand side, so it was on the natural. Oracles are going to activate to help out. I think Zam's holding this, guys, because he's also going to have these stalkers having blink. He can absolutely keep other units alive while cleaning this up, and I don't think this is going to be good enough at all from Solar. And Solar agrees. Zaun is going to hold all those cannons, all that stack defense pulls on through, and Zaun is going to go up 2-1 to one in this best of five grand final. Down the map. Now, Red Zerg player in the bottom right-hand corner. Can he pull it together on Romantic side to give us a five-game finals? I'm cheering for him in this game for that reason alone. It's Solar in the bottom right corner. Top left from Alpha Rex, our blue Protoss player. This is Zaun. What's the prize for the finals? $800 first place, $400 second place. Like I say, obviously, again, these two players also guaranteed to play in the Spring Championship, which is an even higher prize pool event. And, uh, yeah, they, if they want their invites into that, they can absolutely have them. They are our first of uh, first two of ten Korean players that will be in that main tournament. We have eight European players to play as well. Game opens the same way we've seen games open prior to this. That's going to be Gate Nexus Core. Hatch block to force this hatchery to the left side. Obviously no no hatchery blocking from Solar's side of things, not going across the map with a drone or anything like that. I didn't know who Zan was a bit a week ago, and then he's beaten everyone. Yeah, Zan is like a newer name in in, uh, in just StarCraft 2. Like, if you follow StarCraft 2 very finely, you definitely will have known about him, and you will have seen him over the last year, especially. But I mean, I don't, uh, I don't disagree. It's, uh, he's definitely one of these players that, you know, he wasn't in Katowice. He's kind of making it to the early rounds of GSL now, but hasn't had a deep run. So if you're just following major tournaments, you probably haven't heard of Zaun too much. But he has been out here grinding a lot of these lower events. He actually had some, I believe he was, he had some illness in 2020. By the way, this Ling is very hidden. He's like, he's trying to be like a, he's kind of camouflage in. Um, yeah, we actually, Zan, I believe, had an injury in 2020 and he couldn't play as much. And it definitely affected him, I think, in his attempt to qualify for Katowice and everything. So it was uh, maybe not the year he wanted it to be, even it, you know, even after it started off really well for him. With uh, good wins and Katowice qualifiers last year. He actually beat Innovation in a qualifier 3-0, and that was when a lot of people were first like, Whoa, Zaun? Um, so yeah, he's definitely been a um, he's definitely been a player to kind of keep eyes on, you know? Before I get Zin, picks off an OV. We are going to be seeing the single Zergling of Solo going to head up to the top side of the map. Oh, 
Oh, Council drops down the main, just gonna see this Void Ray. Wanting to try and grab the Ling, we'll get rid of that. Six more drones coming through. With this Stargate into Twilight Council yet again. Zown. Obviously, with the Void Ray Oracle, it's a bit of a different setup. But you go Twilight Council again, so it's gonna be the same thing, right? We're gonna start off Glaives? Isn't this really gonna be four games in a row where we end up with Glaives in the early game? And four games in a row where we see a different variation of it, too, right? First two times Twilight Council into Glaives. Then your first time with the Disruptor follow up, second time DT follow up, last game two Oracle into Glaives. This time Oracle Void Ray into Glaives. It's kind of crazy, actually. How does one man have so many different ways to build a single upgrade, you know? Well, feeling some solo checking around. I and mean, what went wrong for solo last game wasn't so much the Adept attack, it was the earlier game. It was the Oracles getting in and dealing a lot of economic damage. And that hasn't happened this time around because there's only one Oracle. So this time around it's a little bit different. This time around it doesn't work in the same way for sure. As Ling's escape through the top side, just checking in what's happening. So yeah, Solo, if he defends like he did last time, you can see already he's on a higher drone count, doesn't have to cut as early. Probably doesn't intend to be in aggressive this game as well, so he can get more drones. So yeah, I imagine Solo should just be able to hold this off, and if he holds it like last game, he should just be in a better position than last game, because again, everything else didn't go wrong early in the game. Good to know. And Depths move by, trying to shade toward that natural expansion. We've got an Oracle of Zaun sitting out on the bottom side of the map. Project gets an Overseer. I'm just going to be seeing the Robo Bay of uh, Zaun. Coming down to the right. Forges going into the plus one. And that's just turned into a very passive game, hasn't it? Not a lot going on. Adapts kind of came across the map. Never really did much. And we kind of just settled down. He's going to see a fourth hatch coming into the front lines here as well. So getting that fourth hatch into position. Observing the Oracle moving around. Look at Hive. That's the setup from Solus. He wants to play Lurkers this game. Obviously very different to how he's approached previous games. But a style that we've seen uh, Zaun have to fight against this weekend so far. It was already used by at least Ragnarok, if not Denver as well. In the earlier series he played in this lower in the lower bracket of the tournament. Adepts come through and just picking up a few of the lings. There's still some Adepts on the far right side of the map as... This one in Blink's about to be done. What's Zaun going to get up to here? He goes to fight, which I think he will. He's going to have to be careful that the Disruptor count, uh, that the Lurker count, sorry, isn't too high. He's got the Robo Bay, so he's got like a follow-up behind this. But he absolutely wants to get on the map and apply some pressure and see if he's, you know, there's any opportunities for him at first. Now, the seven Hydras on the map, so Lurkers can morph in pretty much immediately here. The steps are going to end up shading back to the rest of the army. Blink's forward to grab a Queen to start off. Well, Hydras haven't started morphing into Lurkers yet. That's an 18-second morph, so it takes a little while. Don't think Zaun has enough to just straight up fight into this, but... It's going to force Solo into more immediately ready units, like Hydras and so on. He's not going to build the Lurkers yet. Seismic Spine's on the way. That's obviously an upgrade you typically want before you do go into Lurkers. That's that first Lurker. The first Lurker morphs in the main base. Not sure if that was intentional. Feels like that was just uh, selecting any Hydra he had in his hockey and starting to build a Lurker sort of situation. Alright, well, Zaun backs away. Wasn't really expecting him to commit in there, and Zaun just says, cool, I see kind of what you're doing. And to Amanda's side, it's definitely a map that can play into a longer game, so let's play a longer game. Fleet Peak and two more Stargates. Let's play this into the later stages as, uh, as apparently Zaun's approach. And Depp's shared out the prism of Zaun through the top bottom side. Sorry, he's going to... Have Adepts to try and unload. Sporkwell gets blocked for a few moments. Stasis Ward going to complete up on this high ground. It's 
six, seven, eight, nine workers going down. It's actually a pretty successful little adept attack. Oh my god. Zown, chill out. Let's, let's still have some mining left, dude. 14 workers. Okay, everything dies. Um, the prisoners were included, but 16 drone kills? Obviously, Solar can bounce back from that relatively quickly, but what it does mean is that Solar is now rebuilding drones, not making a bank account, right? He's not depositing into his, uh, you know, safety deposit box for a rainy day after he's taken a fight. He has now got no money in the bank, and so as carriers start to come out, these are the sort of fights which you need to fight, uh, you know, fight as Solar and then rebuild into. So not having money in the, you know, saved away. That could be a little bit of a problem for him here as we have Stalkers holding out at the front line. The Road Ravager Hydra is looking for opening. Now the first locus do burrow up. This is where the carriers are going to be very important, I think, in terms of being able to provide something of a defense. We do have Abducts available. We abduct an Immortal to begin with here. So an Immortal goes down. The carriers are staying very safe toward the back. If you get rid of these Hydras, these carriers will be able to clean everything else up afterwards. So that's the hope for Zaun, and I, I feel like he's doing it. Don't get too aggressive with the Stalkers. Again, you don't need to run into that too soon. There's only a handful of Hydras in the back. He does get one carrier. And so I'll talk him down again like this, just intercepting potential reinforcements, right? Making sure that you know, your biggest threat right now is Zaun is these Lurkers and what they're able to do. So by kind of just hanging around the back, if you're not fighting within range of the Lurkers, you're probably going to be okay. You've got mobility on these Stalkers. Yeah, he finds some good value. Does he have a blink available to get back on the Lurkers here as they retreat? He did. I think he did, but I don't think he wanted to use it. Now more Hydra's showing up. This is where these carriers need to back away. You're about to get up to two more carriers, so there's, there's three on the map, two more about to finish up. If you get to five carriers, it, it just is that difference. And right now, these carriers also don't have interceptors, so Zao needs to stop fighting too soon. He's desperate to get the fourth base back online and hold this position, but I think he can do okay if he just backs off. I mean, now the interceptor count is zero. So you're literally fighting this with... I mean, yeah, these carriers need to back off. Right now, you're fighting one interceptor at a time. It's just not that effective. A few more interceptors available as one carrier finishes. I feel like Zaun got a little bit too over aggro into this, trying to push in a little bit too soon. Solar coming up through the top, and he might just have enough to push on in now. I'm not sure why Zaun felt the need to be as aggressive into that in, in that moment when he could have sat back and just waited for the extra couple carriers. Felt like he made Solar's life easy. Maybe he misjudged how many Hydras were showing up. The Archon's morphing in as we see Stalkers trying to pick away at the Lurkers any way possible. The Hydras are going to keep pushing up here. There are no interceptors on these carriers. They are dead weight units at the moment. Not really providing anything, but as a few Archons show up, Solar will turn it back. There are a couple of Zelts across the map dealing some damage. Fifth base of Solar in mediums amount of trouble. I mean, he's not going to actually lose the hatchery, right? A few more Zelts warp in. Zaun is going to come chasing across the map. If Solar, okay, Solar doesn't have Lurkers right now, and a few of these Hydras going down, the Interceptors are going to have a rebuild set of, uh, Carriers are going to have a rebuild set of Interceptors. If these Carriers are all full on Interceptors, I, I can kind of believe in a fight where this actually works out. They're kind of half full as this fight starts. The Archon actually gets abducted in. That gives it a better chance to do some splash damage here. Zelda's coming in from this top side. Zaun is going to kind of believe in his ability to fight at the moment. Transfusion's on the Lurkers, buying some time. As Zelda's trying to get on top of the Hydras. I mean, this time the Hydras aren't really able to get on the Interceptors as easily for a long time. They get there in the end, though, and Zaun, again, has to back it up. Man, these Interceptors just take a lot longer to build than you really think they do. Now you're going to lose a carry, and that's the sort of thing you can't really afford to have happen at all. Army supply from Solo sticking around 80, Zaun around 60. It was a bit better for Zaun in the previous lead up into the battle. And more Archons this time though, but obviously less carriers. And again, the Interceptor count is like zero. My great, I really feel like the Interceptors are the problem. I can appreciate you don't want to wait too long for Interceptors as well, but... The, the power of the carrier just gets so much higher if you have those Interceptors ready. I wonder if you could have just waited and gone... I, I know, I, I'm talking about Interceptors so much, but... I wonder if you could have just waited, full Interceptors and go, and if that goes that much better. Like, these carriers haven't had full Interceptors for, what, like, three minutes? Four minutes? Since the start of the fight that Solar took on the fourth base, right? And it wasn't like Zaun needed to attack there. I definitely saw the opportunity he believed in, but... 
And it was kind of close, but imagine, again, like I say, imagine you have double the damage output from carriers. Probably makes a difference. I get it, like, you lost your fourth base, it doesn't feel good, but... Uh, this is gonna be game, we're on our way to Storm, but we just don't have it in time. The Interceptor count is once again back to being zero. The Hydras are gonna get on top of the fourth base, and I don't think a fourth base going down again is something which Zaun can realistically survive. High Templar are hunted by a group of Hydras on the bottom side of this. And at this point, okay, Storm is finally coming online. That's it, that's all of the splash damage he has, sorry, one more Storm. And now these Hydras will continue to march on through. We are going to game five as Sola is able to make it work. And Sola is going to take us the distance in our grand finals here today. One final map will decide round or two before we tuck off into this, which is why we did a few shout outs. We do have in the top right our red Protoss player from Alpha X. Give it up! We're cheering on Zaun. Bottom left, our blue Zerg player is Kaizy Gaming Solar. Comes down to this. This is what the Winter Championship is decided on. Solar and Zaun making their way through this tournament. Zaun especially has had a grueling run. Can he finish it off? Can he make that one final map be his? We are so, so very close. Wrapping this whole thing up. Rope around in the natural expansion. Obviously doing that blockage once again. What do we see on pillars? Are we going to see glaives? Surely we do not see glaives again, right? Surely there's just no way we can realistically go into glaives one more time. All right, well, Nexus comes through, and we get ourselves off into Pillars of God. I'm thinking we got to see something. Maybe actually we see Stargate, like double Stargate Void this time. The thing is, it's a good map for Queen Walks. So that's potentially a problem as well. Hmm... Alright, well, a couple queens on the way in. Zergling speed is starting up in that spawning pool. Uh, really just waiting for the, uh, the the tech from the Protoss. That's really going to be what tells us a lot more about how this game goes. We're going to see the Stargate to start things. So, it is going to be Stargate. Like I said, I don't think you can Stargate into Glaives a third map in a row as well. I think it is time to just play the pure Stargate setup. Unless you really don't believe that can work against Solo. Like, maybe, I mean, I know Zaun played some games against Solo yesterday. He won a Series 3-1 to one against him. So maybe, in, in his eyes, that's a matchup which he just can't play in the later stages, right? Maybe he can't win in those oh, later stages of the game. That's a possibility, for sure. Well, extra creep team is continuing through, so they're going to... Rally these creep teamers down the ramp and a hatchery coming up on the natural. Going towards three bases here. As our Zergon speed gonna complete. Now warp gate is gonna be done in just a few moments' time from Zaun as well. Boydway pops out, gonna take down this overlord, so clean that out nice and easily. We have the Oracle Corona boosting out of the Stargate here. So bringing that up and running. And these couple of gates can continue to rally out. Void, Oracle. No way. A Twilight again? You know what? I don't know what to believe with Zion anymore. You know, 
know, he mixed this in all week long, but like he never committed to it as heavily as this. Really, he really just believes this is the weakness of Sola in these games. I mean, it has to be, right? Like, it doesn't, doesn't nothing else really make sense. Ling comes across to the upper right side of the map. As Undep gets here, Ling gets picked away at. Claire is on the way from Stola, and we do see the Oracle showing up. A couple of drones already going down. Back around that right hand side, here comes our Glaives. Man, it's just so weird. It's, so, it's again just so off from a lot of the PvZ that we've been seeing lately, so it's so weird to see it five games in a row now. Ling's going to try and get to the front, and we do have Adepts on the left side to protect from those Lings as the third Nexus is already down, finished, and producing probes. So we're already in a point where the economy is down is getting to good places. Again, no real damage taken early from Solar and Overlord that the Void Ray is always going to kill a couple of drones. Not damage like we look at back on, you know, say Jack and Athra, so I just fell horribly far behind from that initial damage. And was unable to really stabilize from there on out. We're going to be joined by the Oracle in a few moments' time. A few extra roaches on the way. Road speed coming up. The Evolution Chamber of Solar going to be finishing on the natural. And, yeah, just going to be seeing Zam bringing the Adepts across to get a bit aggressive. Glavis is about to be done. And again, Zam's not having any chill on the probe count. He's still just producing probes. What does Solar want to do? I mean, Solar's a 58 work because he could cut here. And he could go into unit production just to push across the map with road speed and to end this game. That's absolutely a possibility. Let's find out. Especially with the way Zan's playing, he never has like a ton of extra adepts here, right? So it doesn't feel like Solo needs to keep on building these roaches. He's going to start plus one missiles, though, and that is going to suggest that this game is not going to be, you know, Solo walking across the map or so. Oracle turns back around. The adepts. On the 3 o'clock position, Ling's through the bottom side. Roaches and Ravage are still morphing. He cancelled plus one missiles, so he's actually just faking that out, or that already changed his mind. I'm not sure if uh, Zaun got to scout at all. Extra gates coming through. We see a cannon and a gate. The thing is that Zaun isn't building a lot of stag defense, right? So it feels like this stag defense is starting to come up now, but might be a little late. Sola's already coming up to the top side of the map. Sola, this all in. To win it all in the Wardy TV Winter Championship. Lings are going to get into the natural expansion. Surrounds the two brand new sentries that get taken down immediately. Zaun has already fallen apart a little bit for him, honestly. The Stasis War doesn't catch a lot. You've got Lings shredding a mineral line. I feel like that's already kind of a game decider. His cannons are going to start taking some bile damage. Super battery saving what it can. The Royal Travage account still looking good. An Immortal pops up, but it's on the right side, so it's going to be secluded from everything else. We see some Adepts on the other side. Going to start killing some drones, though. So Solar taking economic damage himself. Extra few Ravagers coming through here. Plus one attack finishes from Zaun. That will help a lot in this fight as he warps into more Stalkers. The Immortal on the right side. Not hitting Roaches. There are no Roaches to hit. So any damage it brings out is just good damage at the moment. Stalker count still going down. In the end, Solar has lost more drones and Zaun lost probes due to those Adepts. And as Zaun continues to fight here, I'm not sure Solar has the numbers... To continue on with this, uh, does he just about? He wins the fight on the left side, and there's no extra reinforcements there. Running out of battery energy, etc. definitely hurts. The Immortal now has no shield, so it has to back away. Oh, I think Zaun is the one that doesn't quite have enough left any longer. Sol is going to be trying to push up to the top side. These probes are secluded, so Zaun has to fight to try and save the workers. A couple of bows do land, and that's not going to help Zaun either. The barrier comes back on the Immortal. Last moment help here to try and save the day, but the Roaches will take it down. Immortal falls, no further Immortal in production, and Sola is your Wardy TV Winter Championship victor. 3-2 to two in an epic grand final. He's undefeated in series in the tournament, but geez, Zaun brought it to him. I mean, credit to Zaun. You cannot say anything bad about him. He has played a fantastic event. He was so close. He came all the way to the end. GG Sola! Three, Zound two, and Solo is the winter champion.